Hello and welcome to the Coming to Knit podcast. Today it is Friday, it's always on Fridays we do this, but it's Friday, October 7th. So finally, October is here. It's my favorite month. It's my favorite season when it's all chilly and the leaves are going golden and brown and I just love fall. So I'm so happy that it's finally fall. And episode number... 56. I'm looking at my computer because I just kind of went through the, uh, the the last episode just to make sure that I pick up on something I forget or if I talk about something that I need to finish or whatever. I have some pretty exciting news to share with you today, but you have to hold on a little bit before I reveal some of that. And uh, I have a finished object. In the last episode, I talked about the Sand Viper Shawl. I am not sh sure actually that I'm going to call this Sand Viper <laughs> Shawl. So if you have another good idea for a name for that shawl, please let me know because um, it's a little confusing when you have both a knitting pattern and a yarn called the same thing. Especially because I already have two Sand Viper yarns. I have Sand Viper and Sand Viper and Spice. And the yarn I used for this show was the Sand Viper and Spice in the glitter uh, version. I just love that little sparkle. And the Sand Viper mohair. So it's, uh, you can see that the spice just has a little bit of that warm. red or pink um, but these are the two yarns I have used for the shawl you have watched the progress of the shawl for a long time it is finally ta-da finished and I might have blocked this a little too aggressively uh, in the wingspan <laughs> so it's very long you don't have to do it as aggressive as I did I just really like big shawls and I want them to be long enough so when I kind of put them around my neck I still have long ends that I can kind of hang or enough so I can tie them a little bit. I always wear my shawls like this big <laughs> around my neck I love it like this but it's also actually because it's so uh, the fabric is so gorgeously uh, Thin and it's almost I don't know the right word for that uh, it's just so first of all it's so soft and because you have the two rows of silk mohair on its own every uh, five and six rows is mohair it just kind of gives us this light airy fabric and it's still so big that you can use this as a shawl and uh, the, the tails will be long but what I did in this version was that I when I bind it off I did that very loosely and when you bind up very loosely your stitches are longer and that way you can block it even longer so I think the width the width my wingspan let's just stick with that word is uh 2.5 meters and i'm gonna adjust that in the pattern so don't you don't have to unblock it this aggressive uh i think two meters maybe 230 would be just fine and i added some tassels uh i did that in mohair on every other mohair row i added this mohair tassel you don't have to do that. I just love tassels and I thought it would be fun uh, to do that for once. I have never actually done that in any of my designs before. So, but um, help me up with a name. Uh, if you don't come up with anything or if I don't come up with anything, this will just be called the Vampire Show. Not the Vampire Show. Oh my God. No, I uh, Sand Viper Show. Uh, 
because the colorway is in fiber but if you want to knit this in another color it's not really that logic to call it the same fiber so so i need something maybe i need another name i always name everything english um so it needs to be an english name and it can uh it could be a name referring to the lightness of this and uh, the transparency of this. But I'm very happy with it. And I need to be taking some good pictures so we can get this uh, out there. Uh, if you want to test let me know uh, if you test my patterns you always get 50 percent of the yarn used for the pattern if you want to use my yarn it's not it's not a rule for me that you have to uh, use my yarn when you test my patterns um, but i would like uh, if someone would like to because uh, i just i'm just curious to see some of my colorways dyed on this color and if you're interested in just knitting for me just knitting samples that I can take with me on um, knitting festivals and stuff like that. If you're not interested in keeping the finished object, you just want to knit, uh, let me know because I really need people to knit for me. I have, I'm running out of time here. So if you're interested in just knitting garments and sending them back, please let me know. Uh, that might be a little bit too difficult if you live overseas because I'm thinking shipping and costs of shipping. But if you're located here in Denmark, uh, let me know if you're interested in that. So the one piece of sand viper shawl, I'm very excited. And uh, yeah, almost looks like feathers, but uh, uh, Andrea Mari already, already have a shawl called Birds of a Feather. That's really pretty. So let's, uh, let's find something else to name this. Uh, you will use, need uh, two skeins of the fingering weight yarn and one skein of the mohair and there will be enough yarn to do tassels in either, in either yarn, whatever you prefer. I also just kind of played around with making those big, I forgot what they're called and I, uh, I was making some of these last night just to just to play around and see if that would go well on the shell but i just really kind of like the smaller tassels better so i'm sticking with this but of course you can do whatever you want to and if you want to have one of these big ones down the bottom you can do that uh yeah that was all for the show let me know if you're interested in testing or knitting for me uh, and, and just let me say, always email me because uh, I get a lot of messages on Instagram and they get lost and they, they um, I have so many messages on Instagram that they just kind of, they just kind of drown in, in, in all the other messages that I get. So if you have something important to share with me or ask me, always email me. And if I have not answered on Instagram, I'm sorry, it's not that I don't want to, it's just that it's just so complicated. <laughs> and also, it's just nice to have communication at uh, one place so that I don't have to check all different kinds of social media and risk not answering anyone. So um, I would not like that. Okay, so next. Uh, the next thing is um, somewhat serious, actually it's very serious. I have a very good colleague. She used to be a colleague. Now she, I don't work at the school anymore, but uh, a very nice colleague of mine. And she just recently invited uh, all the women in her life to a uh, breast celebration, life celebration party because she has breast cancer. And um, when something like this happens, usually if something serious happens to someone that I care about or someone I love or in my family, um, good way for me to show my support or my love is to knit something. Um, words can only say so much, but they know, <laughs> and I know that I put love in every stitch. So 
for a person uh, battling breast cancer or cancer uh, in any shape or form um, usually will have gone through some kind of chemotherapy and have no hair left and for my uh, friend uh, that goes for her as well she lost her hair so I wanted to knit her something to keep her head warm but also wanted it to be um, extra thick and extra soft so I played around with one strand of DK weight yarn and one strand of the Mega Mo hair to knit a hat and I knit her a hat and I gave it to her on the day of the party and since I gave her that hat I have just been thinking that I should make this hat call it Hillis hat because her name is Hilly and um, I haven't I haven't sorted out all the details yet but I'm gonna do this pattern I'm gonna call it Hillis hat and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make all the profit of the hat go to the uh, breast cancer awareness foundation that we have here in Denmark and it's called support the boobs <laughs> and it is with uh, a Danish organization called uh, Kraftens Bekämpfelse, which is like a huge Danish organization that um, helps any kind of cancer research. But you can do this um, concentrated or with the aim of, of breast cancer awareness so that all the money will go to research about breast cancer. I just recently read that one out of five women will deal with breast cancer. Was it really one out of five? I might check up on that one more time because I don't want to say anything wrong, but it was just a, a really crazy high number. So I am working on another Hillis Hu, which will be for me and also for pictures and for the finished pattern. And of course the color will be some kind of boob color <laughs> because uh, someone have brown boobs, someone have lighter boobs, someone have pinker boobs. So this is kind of for all the skin tones out there in the world, uh, brown, white, pink, um, whatever color you have. So um, these are the two yarns that I am knitting. Um, I knit those together. So in this yarn, we have a specks of brown and lighter shades of pink and darker shades of pink. So you got all the boobs and all the nipples <laughs> come behind one right here um, and still have a hat that doesn't look exactly like a boob but it is boob inspired so this will be the boob hat we'll call it Haley's hat also because another friend of mine or another um, Danish podcaster whose name is also Hille I just found out had battled with cancer she is uh, she is good they got it all out but this is two Hillis in my circle of women that has been battling cancer. So I thought Hille was a good name for this. So this is how far I got. Uh, the first hat I knit for Hille, <laughs> I forgot to take notes. I just I was just knitting for her and I was in a hurry because I wanted it to be done for the party and I succeeded. But uh, this is hat number two and I'm working on the ribbing. And I like to, the hats to be a bit slouchy, so we will see about that. Uh, the colorway is a new colorway. I have just played around with that the other day. Uh, so far it's called Sahara, uh, named after the desert. <laughs> and one skein of uh, Dolce de Leche, which is my DK weight sock yarn. So once I have figured all this out with how to... Uh, get all the money transferred and how that works out. I haven't I haven't figured all the all of those logistics out yet. I will. And also because tomorrow here in Denmark on Saturday the 8th, it is they call it Pink Saturday because they have extra awareness on breast cancer tomorrow. So I think it all just kind of uh, it all just comes together with this idea and it feels like the right thing to do and it feels like uh, i felt such a strong women bond at this boob party last saturday um 
sometimes women are not really nice to each other. I, 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 I can feel that we want to tell another story that women stick together. They don't always stick together. Sometimes the women are nasty to each other. But I really did feel when Hilla invited to this party that everyone kind of deleted whatever was in the calendar because this was something really important that we stick together when something really important happens. That's what I feel with my uh, girlfriends as well. If something really bad happens, they are always there. Doesn't mean that sometimes <laughs> we can bitch a little bit and have opinions about how we raise our kids and what food we give our families and what clothes we wear and if our asses are too big or too small or if we wear too much makeup or if our roots uh, grow out a little bit too much. Sometimes I don't think we are very good to each other, but I do feel that when it's important enough, we are always there. So let's be there for each other and uh, my way of contributing a little bit to those who does not uh, have the health that I'm so blessed to have at the moment. You never know what happens. I will be doing this <laughs> for, for them. So, so I hope you will help me bring awareness to this. And uh, once this hat pattern is done, uh, to uh, buy the pattern and um, support breast cancer research because that's important. Okay, so enough. Enough about boobs and boob hats. I will let you know when I have figured out uh, everything about that hat and of course when it's ready for purchase. Moving on to something that I am extremely excited to be sharing with you and something that has been um an idea i got sometimes i get ideas faster than a, a pig can wink <laughs> i have heard that expression in the children's book by esther lindgren many years ago about a medican who lives in sweden and she gets idea and ideas faster than a pig can wink i love that expression uh, anyway i do the same i get ideas some of them doesn't work but sometimes i do think i get a good idea and i did this time or at least i think so but i got an idea so let me share my idea with you i made a little video from start to finish so that you can see the progress it takes approximately three minutes and you can just skip if you don't want to <laughs> if you don't want to watch that whole uh three minutes in a row but here it is, and uh, once that is done, I will be back to um, talk a little bit more about this new thing that's happening. Uh, enjoy!
yes, I am very excited about the new Cami Jonet bags that I have hand dyed myself, as you've seen, and that my aunt has sewn in her little shop. Um, this is um, the first bag that we did. Uh, I can't say we because I just like the fabric and my aunt she used to work as a nurse in the uh, ER so she is extremely effective and systematic and uh, we do not have time for coffee breaks <laughs> she likes to just work and be effective effect, effect, efficient efficient or um, and busy and I love that and I love her and I love how we work together and how our minds work the same and we get equally excited and um, we had invited my parents to her house for lunch because they live very close and we were both like okay can we go back to the room now because we have a really nice um, we're playing and we're, and we're so excited so I have decided to do uh, colors that match my yarn. So, if you can see what this is, if not, let me give you a hint. So, I picked out four colors. Uh, some of the colors that I sell the most because I just thought it was fun. So, this is Petals, which is uh, Lavender. Oh, no, maybe not lavender, more, maybe more of a lilac with some mustard colored specks. So I needed to do uh, one of those. And she did this while I was there, as you saw on the video. So this one I have. I'm not going to put any of this in the shop yet. So you will have to be patient until I get all the bags. I have um, four colors, four in each color. Do I have five colors? Maybe I have five colors. <laughs> now I have six colors. Six colors and four in every color. So I will have four of these petals. And of course, as you saw, we did the Cabbage's favorite mug, which is right here. And we changed the tags. Uh, sh they used to be called Bags by Hoya, but um, it's easier that uh, it's just the same name. It's it's my my company is way too small to be <laughs> distributing. Oh, that's the wrong word. My company is way too small to have different names and brands under one umbrella. So I'm just uh, calling everything Cabbage in it, and we're going to keep this. Uh, marine blue color on the logo so we have two bags so far uh, besides Kemi Jo's favorite mug and um, petals so the six different colors will be uh, Kemi Jo's favorite mug and petals the two I just showed you there will be Nyoa there will be Sand Viper there will be a cinnamon spice and there will be um, Singapore sling. So this is the six colors. So there will be 24 bags altogether, four in every color. But this was very fun and I want to do more. <laughs> so let me know in the comments down below. You can go through all my yarns in my web shop and let me know what colorway you would like uh, for me to do the bags in it doesn't mean that you want to buy one and you are not obligated to do so but just what do you think would be the prettiest bag if you choose one of my colorways and if you don't think that any of my colorways would uh is your favorite for the bag just let me know another color that you would like for the bag and maybe that could inspire me to do both bag and another yarn <clears throat> but um sometimes i think that i dye a color that everyone will love <laughs> and 
that's not true and sometimes i dye a color and i think no one will buy that and it sells out immediately so sometimes um i just don't know what you want <laughs> and sometimes i do it's very it's sometimes you want the same that i do and sometimes you want something completely different so it, instead of me just guessing what next what color should i next for the bags just let me know your favorite and what you think would look good because um i can only guess and uh, if i only guess you can never get your wish granted because maybe i'll never guess right so let me know uh which color you would like for me to do next and preferably in one of my uh, colors that is already uh, out there. So I don't have to invent too much all over. Anyway. Uh, enough for the project. Oh, oh no, because. So because I'm having all these new bags by her. No, <laughs> the new Camden Eat project bags. I will give you 50% off all the small uh, project bags that I have uh except for the christmas ones but all the one in linen and all the old christmas bags all of those 50 percent off with the code higher uh 50. i'll put that down here below so uh that uh, will be for the rest of the weekend so you can use that uh, discount code for the rest of the weekend and uh yeah it'd be exciting then we get something new in and some of the old stuff out all right good so only for you and the last thing i want to share is um the giselle shawl i have it right here i have two actually uh this was the first one i have talked about the giselle shawl in earlier episodes uh the inspiration and so on so you can go back and <laughs> check that out i forgot which episode it was but i know that i did talk about my inspiration uh from the ballet of the giselle anyway right now it's uh it's 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 out there um selma from little big knits talked about it and uh well selma thank you for doing that because uh a lot of people has bought the uh, pattern since Selma talked about it in her podcast, and also there has been going there has been a knit along in Germany, uh, and that really also did something with the Giselle show. So and since this yarn for the original one is not yarn that I have, it's hard to get. I need to buy them different places and make kits. It doesn't make sense now that I dye my own yarn. I wanted to make some kits. Um, in color combos that I would think would be nice and I did that so they're not in the shop yet hopefully when you watch it it will be <laughs> I just need to go upstairs and take pictures of the yarn I have two versions the one I just showed you and the other version is um, this pink and yellow one in yarn from La Bienne May uh, this is her yellow brick road and this is her uh, silk mohair in the colorway Sansa so if you want this exact combo, uh, you need to buy Le Bien Amel yarn. But I made some, um, I dyed some yarn. Hold on. In the last episode, I did talk about finding the perfect yarn for the Giselle shawl. Because two skeins of fingering weight yarn is not enough because there's usually only 400 meters in a skein of fingering weight yarn and that's not enough. You need more and the original yarn that i used for the show was a manos de uruguay in the in the base fino which has 450 meters per 100 grams so i really needed to find a new base so that i could make sure that two skeins would be enough so you don't spend all this money on yarn you don't need and also I really needed something with a little bit silk in it. So I found just the perfect base. I call this base Misty. And as you can see here, it is, let me just make sure I say it right. 60% Superwash Merino, 20% Alpaca, Baby Alpaca and 20% Silk. So it has this lovely feel to it. Let me show you one that's not been twisted. So maybe you can see the yarn better. 
so it's single ply i love single ply yarn it looks blue on the screen it is really a lovely gray um because uh this is not a thinner yarn it simply has uh it's simply just 115 gram skeins <laughs> so it is uh it is just perfect so you will have two let me see 400, 460 meters in one skein because there's a little extra yarn in these skeins so it's perfect for the Giselle so far i did two colorways i did this one i call spicy caramel Whip. and i'm going to do a kit with these two which is a new colorway i dyed in the silkmore hair i call this vanilla i thought these two would just be gorgeous together it's so warm it almost looks like looks like scent i call it vanilla because it's warm but it's not pink so i have enough for two kits in this i only dyed four of these because i only ordered uh, 20 skeins of this i ordered more so i will be making more but now i just want to try to make different suggestions and then whatever if you buy this i can dye more <laughs> but if i make 10 of these kits and this is not the combination you want then it's hard so i do a little like a few of each uh combinations and we will see which one you prefer this one i really love then <laughs> i did this uh i call it asphaltos because i i just always i've always loved the color that looks like asphalt and i was um researching how to say asphalt in english and i found out it was the same as in danish <laughs> but then i found out that it's actually a word it's an old Greek word. And when I studied theology, I actually did study uh, ancient Greek. So uh, I can speak a little, not speak, but I can read some old ancient Greek. Anyway, in in Greece, it's called Elfaltos. So I just thought that was fun. So I call it Asphaltos. And still, I think everyone can kind of hear Asphaltos, what that means. And I dyed some of my pink lilac that Selma used for her shawl and I think this would just be a gorgeous combo with the asphaltos but I also just really love the vanilla with the asphaltos um, so either way I will make these as kits I think I will do actually I think I will do asphaltos with um, pink lilac at least one and because I did dye a little extra of the vanilla, I have enough for two kits for the spicy caramel. And I can also do one kit with this vanilla together with the asphalto. So we will actually have only three different cup. We have four colors because we have two of these and two of these. But I will make switching, um, I will mix and match so that the asphaltos can have kits with uh, any of the two I don't think that these two are good together so I will not make kits with that but let me know if you buy the kit and you want me to change the silk more hair with something else because I can do that uh, because I was just checking out my Tennessee warbler I thought that would be really good with the black and I was also thinking about uh, Oh yeah, Arizona was really cute as well with this asphalt. So lots of options. I already, I always, um, I also really like my cinnamon spice uh, silk my hair. That would be really pretty with the spicy caramel, I think, for the Giselle. So the only thing I can be a little concerned with is choosing a silk my hair with too much craziness because i think it kind of kills the diamond lace pattern so some variation variations i think will be uh good but my personal taste i don't think too crazy speckled yarn will be good for the giselle if you want to use speckled yarn use the speckled yarn on the background 
and then have a solid color for the for the lace I, I might cast on this myself I think this combo is just so pretty and I really need one in my own yarn don't you think I should I deserve it uh, last thing I caked up my little um, self striping yarn from a lonely sock lady and since it is socktober <laughs> And I have no socks on my needles. I think I will be casting on a pair of these a little later today. Uh, as I said, it is Friday and all the girls have plans. So it's just me and Lars home tonight. And I'm thinking it's PJ's feet up, good movie, maybe a cold beer, a glass of wine. And just relax. Tomorrow we are having our Halloween party. We do this every year. We invite all our friends from the area. Uh, this started out as a tradition before I even had kids, <laughs> me and my brother and his son. Uh, we did, we bought a pumpkin and that was the party number one. And since then it escalated. So it's, maybe I should do a vlog tomorrow because it is insane what this happens to this house. We got a smoke machine. So there's smoke everywhere. Skeletons, huge spiders. I know for Americans, maybe we are not that crazy, but for the original Danish family, this is wacko. And uh, our Brazilian extension, Lori, is bringing a friend. Uh, she invited one of her extension friends uh, that is also from Brazil. So we really want to go all in and uh, give them a blast. It's always fun to do something extra when you have uh, extensions at the house and really give them, uh, as you say in Danish, in for Oblé one, which means like give them one on the experience. <laughs> so I hope, hopefully, uh, they think that it'll be a fun day. So let me wrap this up, get this uploaded to YouTube. Oh, of course, I promised I would show you the cutroy. Oh no. Oh no. I went outside my own comfort zone a little bit. But two new corduroy colors, just to try new colors. One is this gorgeous green, like a dark. Um, it's not it's not bluish at all. It's really green, warm, gorgeous green. And the linen, I always mess up with linen and lining. Lining, I think it's called. Cool. Will be this mm, yeah so this is one set Did he? four upcoming bags and the next will be okay I have the wrong side out of this this gorgeous bright blue with very subtle white with tiny tiny blue flowers so only two corduroy bags because i have all the <laughs> handmade hand dyed project bags uh, of course the project bags that i have uh, dyed and made with my aunt this time will be more expensive than the corduroy bags prices are going up on everything that includes material and also dyeing yarn, dyeing the fabric. I have to, you know, if you don't live in Europe, Europe is in the middle of a crisis right now. The prices for electricity has skyrocketed. It's insane. Anyway, this is the fabric for the upcoming project bags. I think that's it. I actually did bring um, my blanket that I'm working on for my brother and his uh, girlfriend but I think I'll just show you next time because uh, I did a little progress that on on that on the Fainu Knitting Festival but um, I really haven't worked much on it since then so I will save that for the next episode maybe we can do a little what is in all my baskets and all my project bags and oh I can kind of show you how much I'm actually working on behind the scene uh yeah so let's uh wrap this up for now thank you so much for watching yet another episode of the kevin janet podcast 
I am also um, on Instagram as Chemistry on it, so um, I can see that the algorithm is going nuts again. So if you haven't seen anything from me in a long time, make sure to go back into Instagram, find my account, like some random pictures. <laughs> and uh, I think that way I will maybe return to your uh, newsfeed. Um, I'm also on Ravelry and everywhere else on as Kemi Jonet. So if you can find me, go by Kemi Jonet. I will pop up <laughs> just about anywhere. Uh, yeah. So that's it for now. Take care. Enjoy your weekend, and I will see you in two weeks from now. Bye, guys. Oh, and of course, always uh, thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. That's the only way we can get more knitters to stop by this channel for some uh, lovely knitting chat, chit chat. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I will see you. Bye.